conversation we're having in the UK right now with regards to financial regulation is very worrying from a civil society point of view. Um, you know, most people want a banking and financial system that is resilient, that doesn't crash, that also provides the basics, you know, access to payments, investment in the things we need, like green transition and small businesses and face-to-face -face banking for those who need it. And we're just so far away from those things right now. And, and nothing out of either of the current conservative leadership candidates that want to become our next prime minister in the next couple of weeks are talking about uh, a financial system that does those things. And what we're having instead, as you mentioned, is this, um, this battle to actually deregulate the sector, to kind of wind the clock back to pre-2008 global financial crash um, and, and set us on a path that could end up you know, in, in that situation or a lot worse. So Liz Truss's proposal to merge the, the, the three key city watchdogs um, you know, would, would risk recreating that light touch regulatory regime. It's the regime we had um, pre-crash and you know, many people, including city insiders, saying this is a bad idea. It, it makes us seem like you know, we kind of keep changing our minds. I mean, it wasn't that long ago in, in terms of when we um, set up a much bigger regulatory system because there was a, a consensus that there is so much risk in the system, complexity in the financial sector needs to be properly regulated. Um, so from our perspective, we do really need to push back on this deregulatory de agenda, um, which you know all sides of the Conservative Party are supporting. So whoever's the Prime Minister is looking to, to deregulate City. Fran, I certainly take your point about the need for a careful regulation and a, a functioning, healthy, safe financial system. But on the other hand, the UK is trying to remain competitive in a post-Brexit world. So what are the other alternatives? What would you suggest are the better avenues to creating an attractive financial um, hub? Well, I think, you know, the starting point has to be what, what kind of financial do you want you know do you want one that that does serve um the needs of the, the country and the uh, wider society so uh you know helps us tackle the crisis we face cost of living climate change um you know economic decline in parts of the uk and just the reality is is much of the current city of london financial sector doesn't address those things. We have less than 5% of bank lending going to small and medium-sized businesses, whereas that's 60% of, of private sector employment. So from our perspective, you know, we do really need um, an approach to the finance sector which says, how do we get one that actually serves the, the things that we want um, and, and does kind of, um, you know, have that uh, have those those goals, environmental and societal goals um, in mind. And that's obviously a, a shift from where we are now, especially with the current conversation. And it wouldn't be able to happen overnight, um, but we could go down you know, a number of reforms, thinking about how we get um, different regional banks across the UK, how we could implement uh, digital cash uh, from the central bank that could actually give universal access to people and you know, really put those things at the forefront. I think that um, you know, across the world, we're struggling with inflation, with cost of living, and the big drivers of that have been fossil fuel prices, but also corporate profiteering. And we're seeing, you know, the current economic system really kind of faltering. It doesn't deliver for most people. So actually, we do need to have those conversations about yeah. how we shift the financial sector to the one that does. Yeah, Fran Aribile here is just, I mean... If you lose the independence, though, of the BOE, surely the integrity thereof, as well as your standing in, in global communications, whether it be G8, G20, or any other uh, sort of conversation as, we, as, as well around central banks and how you've worked your economy, does that change a whole lot? I mean, does that, does that get into you know, people sort of feeling as though they can't trust your central bank as much? Or is this just really pretty much the same as somewhat the U.S.? I mean, they have dual mandates. They could work that way, too. Yeah, I mean, I think in terms of the like the Bank of England independence, I mean, 
I always talk about that conversation as a bit of a red herring because it has operational independence now, but its mandate is always set by government. So government decides, you know, how its resources are, what their resources are geared towards. And it was under Rishi Sunak last year, which um, updated its mandate to include climate change. Like that was, we saw that as a really progressive step forward. But obviously, it's what comes next. How is that mandate acted upon that really matters? Um, so I think, you know, I'd say Liz Truss or Rishi Sunak, you know, and, and, conversations happening around the world are okay you know it's a very live conversation that we've had for the last 10 years is like are central banks mandates out of date do we need to update them you know like you say the fed has a dual mandate it does look at employment as well um but the reality is how do those translate into economic policy uh and so i'd say what's the starting point for trust you know and i you know, i'm a bit skeptical that trust's starting point is those environmental social goals of climate change financial inclusion that i discussed and so it would be good for her to lay out a bit more what she's hoping to achieve with a mandate review if that's something that happens in the coming autumn in the uk